So perhaps the waves involved in quantum processes move in the opposite direction from that assumed by quantum mechanics. Now, to be clear here, by the wave emitted at B, I do not mean the time reverse of the wave emitted at A. Recently, the so-called transactional interpretation of quantum mechanics has been proposed, which employs such time-reversed waves. But such a wave does not help in solving the problem of quantum mechanics. First of all, time doesn't go backwards. Uh, motion might go in the opposite direction, but the time still goes forwards. So time-reversed waves would uh, be still another unphysical hypothesis, which is what we're trying to eliminate. And even if the time-reversed wave were interpreted as moving forward in time, it would converge on the scattering center and on the particle source from all directions. And the flux from different directions would be mutually coherent. So you'd have... See, you know, operate this. <laughs> they showed me, but I've already forgotten. There it is. The waves would converge coming in if it was a time-reversed wave, and they'd converge on the source. And the flux would have to be mutually coherent as it arrived. So there'd have to be some kind of non-local interaction to explain how all those different flux pieces coming in from all directions uh, added up in exactly the right coherent manner. So we'd still have the problem of non-locality with such a reverse wave, uh, time reverse wave. The reciprocity theorem applies to a wave emitted at B and spreading out from there. This is what, I, what I'll call a reverse wave, and it, that's very important to the physics of the whole process, that it spreads out in that reverse direction. Now, in forward, forward wave quantum mechanics, it's mathematically impossible to develop a local theory in which the wave and the particle are separate objects with the wave somehow carrying the particle. As the particle leaves the scattering center, mathematically its direction is determined by the wave amplitude over the entire volume around the scattering center, and not just at the location of the scattering particle. So there'd have to be a non-local interaction of some kind to explain uh, you know, between the particle and all parts of the wave in order to be able to predict the result seen in the laboratory. But in a reverse wave theory, you have no such problem. Here the waves are branching out in the opposite direction to the direction of the particle's motion. In the direction that the particle moves, the branches are coming together, not apart. So as the particle leaves the scattering center, it has only one direction to go, uh, toward the detector from which its wave is coming. The particle simply homes in on the source of the wave. So the mechanics depends only on the direction of the wave at the location of the particle. <clears throat> now we'll see later that actually there is some choice uh, of, of, uh, within, the, within the scattering center that that uh, the particle doesn't just immediately move toward the detector. But the choice there depends only on the wave at the location of the particle. Um, the, the different choices will depend on parameters in the particle. Now, perhaps your initial reaction is that uh, if the waves did move in reverse, if the physics were really that dramatically different, uh, surely we would have seen evidence of this in the laboratory. Well, in fact, we have, many, many times. But because the forward wave theory works quantitatively, the evidence has always been interpreted in that framework. The often obvious conclusion has been overlooked. Uh, as just one example, many experiments have been performed in which a particle is fired through a system of some kind with which it interacts thereby changing the state of both the system and the particle. Only later does one then observe the state of the particle. And it appears that the only way one can understand the outcome is to conclude that the act of looking at the particle later on determines backwards in time the state of the system, the state that the system was left in. 
Well, again, nothing happens backwards in time. If what happens over here affects what happens back here, then something has to travel from here to here to bring about the effect. There's no other way it could happen. That something is the reverse wave. And again, we've seen many experiments where there's that reverse direction effect. Now, I'll demonstrate today that the waves, in fact, do move in reverse. And that by correcting that assumption, all the contradictions and unphysical aspects of quantum mechanics disappear. In addition, the theory that results is much simpler than quantum mechanics. As we will see, the only purpose served by most of current quantum theory is simply to compensate for the error of having assumed the forward motion of the waves. With reverse waves, more than 90% of current quantum mechanics simply evaporates. To uh, present the theory in more detail, I would like to begin by describing how the theory explains the double slit experiment. If I could have slide two, please. <coughs> 